So welcome to the beginning of the winter season. It is going to be an amazing winter season of the JPO. This winter season, you're going to be getting the most amazing and absolutely exquisite conducting as well as soloists performing the most amazing works ever. So join us on Project CB. Myself, Lindy Shabangu, with the camera person behind them, being Carlet Bardenhuis. This is Project CB. Welcome. So that's what the third movement sounds like, or a bit of it. And uh, the pianist uh, last night, Edith Pellier, it seems like she's the type of pianist, if you ask her to play this work backwards, she'll be able to do it. She knows it inside and out, and she gave a really, really good performance last night. <laughs> Welcome to this wonderful evening. This is uh, Thursday, the amazing 24th of May 2019. The JPO winter season has started. And tonight I'm catching up with the most amazing, soothing voice on radio on Classic 1027. And his name is Dino. Dino, welcome to Project CB. Uh, thank you very much. I just want to ask quickly, have a shot at saying my surname. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> can I spell a driver? <laughs> uh, okay. You can. It's 11 letters. Right. So you do the honours. Okay, thank you. It's Madrumuthu. 11 letters and it sounds like a mouthful of syllables, I know, yes. It's beautiful though. I always want to press rewind on radio. Don't ask me how. Mm. Just so that I could hear you say the surname again. <laughs> <laughs> so tell right. us about yourself who is Dino and how did you start into radio well um, I started in radio on classic 1027 in the newsroom I was a desk editor and doing the early shift and uh, getting up at 3 in the morning and being at work at 5am uh, I can honestly say I don't miss those days but I'd all, all, uh, always known uh, a bit about classical music because I studied music at, okay uh, at university and I started off primarily interested in jazz but fortunately for me I had very good teachers who inducted me into classical music and helped me understand it and then classical music gradually replaced jazz as my musical love and so uh, being at Classic 1027 working at the newsroom I think it was a natural transition to presenting the music and uh, the owner of the radio station at that time asked me to present the classic drive as it was and so I got the opportunity every day to uh, engage with people who also love classic, uh, classical music and share this mutual interest so I consider myself a lucky man. 
Well, I consider myself lucky because I get to learn more about the classical music. I haven't studied classical music. My mother is uh, in a choir, so she always makes me read music and I have no clue what she's talking about. But she mm. always drags me to all the o o operas and orchestras. So. I love the way that you talk about what's happening in the orchestra and actually tell us when to wait for certain surprises, so to speak, and uh, when the intro is coming and how to recognize that. So thank you so much. So tell us about the winter season, the JPO winter season. What well, do we expect? Oh, you can expect some great music. And although, you know, at the radio station we play recorded music, I still maintain the view that live performance is best. Mm. And so what you can expect throughout the winter season is works of genius composers played by world-class musicians. And they're going to be excellent soloists throughout the four-week season of, of the winter season, as well as fantastic conductors with some uh, beautiful pieces like Vivaldi's Four Seasons, oh, which yes. I'm sure... Uh, many people know Sibelius, his symphony number two. He was a great symphonist. Uh, Elgar, the cello concerto, and Mozart, the piano concerto number th 23. And tonight, Camille Saint Saëns, the uh, piano concerto number two, played by an excellent pianist, Edith Pignard. So, in two words, what you can expect over the season is musical excellence played live. That is all wonderful. So, Give us again the details of how to catch up with Dino. I won't say your surname. Mm -hmm. How to catch up with Dino on Classic 1027. Well, you can uh, dial into Classic 1027 either on the web or through radio. And I'm on from 1.30 in the afternoon to, oh, I don't even know my own slot. <laughs> 2 p.m. in the afternoon. <laughs> 2 p.m. in the afternoon to 5.30 in the evening every weekday. And that is when you catch dinner before Michael Avery slots in with business with Michael Avery. So we're going to continue with the music for tonight. Join us. to another session of Project CB. We're catching up with the soloist of these three days. Good evening and welcome to Project CB. Good evening. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about who you are. Yes, my name is Edith Peña. I was born in Caracas, in Venezuela. I started studying piano when I was four there. And uh, about five years later, I made my debut with the orchestra and moved to the United States, to Philadelphia, to study piano there. I studied in the United States most of my life, also a little bit in Paris. And now I live in Spain. Spain. Yes. So you've got the grooves of uh, the movements of, uh, you know, Venezuela. Now it's Spain. You're dancing and <laughs> classical music. How do they come together? Well, my father was a pianist and he was a music critic. So I grew up listening to piano from the moment I was in my mother's stomach. I was listening to the piano and uh, as a child waking up to my father's piano all my life. 
So welcome to South Africa. How are you finding South Africa? Oh, I love it here. I feel like I'm at home since the moment I arrived. I love everything, especially the people. The warmth of the people is just unbelievable. Tell us, how did it come about to be playing with the JPO? I was recommended by Maestro Raiskin, who conducts here quite often. They asked him for a pianist who played Sans Sans, second piano concerto, and I recorded this concerto with uh, the Venezuelan orchestra some years ago, and the recording is uh, on YouTube. So he recommended me, and uh, they heard it, and I guess they liked it, and they invited me. Okay, so we're going to be tagging that um, uh, concerto as well on uh, the channel. So what's your next step from here? Well, I go to Durban for next week to play Brahms' first piano concerto. Wow, when, wh what days are those? That will be on the 30th. I think it's just one date Okay. For the 30th, and uh, then I head back to Spain. Oh, my word. So last words, um, what would you say to South Africans about coming to listen to the JPO? I would say it's something vital to listen to live music. Mm. Radio CDs is not enough. It's wonderful. But to see it happening live, to hear it live, it's something else. So tell me, are those fingers insured? No, they're not. <laughs> Come, I'll insure them for you for millions of No, rest. don't, don't, don't. The minute I insure them, something will happen. So we leave them as is. Well, we thank God for those fingers and for that talent. Thank you very much. I need to ask this lady, did she arrange for the piano to be standing there? Oh, that's where it goes when you play with orchestra, yes. Did they put that piano there? Not this one, the one in Paris. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Did they arrange it? Did you I, organize it? You know, this? I looked it up and I found it. And it was so miraculous that I was right in front of our... See, we were flying from Mexico. I played a concert in Mexico yeah. the day that I flew. Okay. I played at noon and I took the next flight. They were on the same flight. We didn't meet on that flight. But then they were also flying here. We did exactly the same route. It's unbelievable. So... <laughs> I, I was like, oh God, because I played a completely different concerto in uh, Mexico, and I knew that I would be exhausted arriving here because it would be almost 24 hours flying. It was. So hours. <laughs> I looked up and it says Terminal E, whatever L. There's a piano by gate, blah blah blah. And I said, look, it's exactly in front of my gate. So I went there and I started to warm up a little bit, go through my sansans a little bit, and I turn around and I see him listening. He's like. I said, no, no, I'm not doing it for show. I'm just, you know, trying to bring my stuff. She came to me, she says, this is practice. This is not for show. <laughs> so I told them I was coming here. They said they were from here, and I invited them to the concert. And here they are. So you stay in Joburg? No, we're about 60 kilometers, 70 kilometers away. Where? Mayatin. Oh, okay. You're my homie. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> For the ball. <laughs> <How is that? laughs> and so, what's your name? My name is Mike. And Mike, how did you find the um, the beautiful performance? Wow, what can we say? I don't know. You tell this me. This is incredible. <laughs> Not only nice to look at, but amazingly talented. Okay. And you? <laughs> Excellent. And your name? Stefani. I'm and? Mike's wife. Oh, <laughs> oh you know beauty oh, when I you see it. I shouldn't have said You shouldn't have said that. <laughs> and when Edith said we can come, I said, I want three tickets because my friend from Cape Town is visiting. That's actually my mistress. <laughs> oh, you like that. <laughs> <laughs> and your name, sissy? And it is. No, no, no. Slobstad. Oh, Slobstad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's explain. Welcome. Welcome. Okay, guys, to the JPO concert. I, I, it's a tragedy that they're not here. Yeah. Um, I think we need to, as a, as, a, as, a, as a people, encourage art students. We have a captive audience. They're art students. There are youngsters all over South Africa taking piano lessons that should be here, that should get discounted rates to see these amazing stars. Yeah. Um, I mean, this lady was playing the piano at four years of age. Tell me about it. I oh, know, that scares me. I can't even play the fool at 60. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really? So it's, it's just incredible. I think that's what we have to do. We have to get the kids from young age, give them incentives to come here and come and see what this incredible talent besides the lady what about all those other musas yeah it was absolutely important. phenomenal yeah. phenomenal thank you and your thoughts to encourage them well i agree with mike you must just encourage them to come and maybe from a small age bring them with but now we lucky or not lucky and lucky our kids 
are over 20, all the running their own parts or doing their own things. Show the lady the photo of her. Yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> Listen to him now. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's whispering, giving you crypt notes. He's, he's, no, no, he's not giving me crypt notes. He's, he's asking me to, to show her our piano that we've got. Okay. My son can also play, but now, unfortunately, he's not here tonight. Oh. But it would be nice. Maybe they must in, um, invite some schools. I see Jeppy School is here tonight. Maybe they must like keys. I know they've got a little orchestra and a little musical group. It would have been nice if they could invite them to come. Yeah. So maybe they must reach out to the schools and invite them to come and listen and just enjoy the evening with them. And you? What do you think? It's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just need to educate them more. I don't think the, the younger children are educated in the classical music, mm. in this type of music. I went to Umelo High School, which is uh, an art school, and we had all this at the school, and it is fabulous. I think the young people don't get the opportunity to see this. We should bring them here. Okay. It's very good. Ah, thank And uh, that is how we wrap it up with the second session. Mr. Tembo. Yes. Oh, what an incredible, incredible evening. So before we get into the evening, tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Bongani Tembe. I'm the Chief Executive and Artistic Director of the Guazulu Natal and Johannesburg Philharmonic Orchestras. Wow, that's a mouthful. Well, yes, 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 yeah. I'm also a, a singer by training. I studied at the Juilliard School in New York City. Wow, and you chose to come and be behind the scenes and not actually be a soloist and perform. I still, no, I still do a little bit of that. Maybe these days 10 and 20% of my time is spent on performing, but most of the time is really bringing artists from all over the world to South Africa, but also I'm passionate about the idea of um, education as well as community engagement programs. That's a bit awesome, bringing international, the international market to South Africa and taking actually South Africa to the rest of uh, the continent and the world at best. How do you find that working? Is there a synergy? Yeah, it's working very well. You know, international artists and people in general, as I travel around the world, I find that they love South Africa. You know, they come here, they enjoy themselves. People are en engaging here. We are blessed with great vegetation and and um, climate and, and all of that. So people love South Africa, yes. So tell us a little bit about the JPO. Well, the Johannesburg Philharmonic Orchestra um, is doing very well, and I joined them about three years ago, and they did go through a, 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 you know, an unfortunate patch, but now it's one of the most stable orchestras in South Africa. It's attracting musicians from South Africa and around the world, and it's doing great things, and just about every week they're at a school in Soweto or elsewhere, really contributing to the community on the ground. So what would be the essence of the challenge for um, the JPO? Well, the challenge, for a lack of a better word, is to try to serve people better, is to pursue excellence and attain very high standards, world-class standards, but at the same time uh, being rooted in South Africa and also doing music that reflects our heritage. Okay. Now, l talking about music that reflects our heritage, when you talk about heritage to a South African, you're talking about storytelling. Now, what is the winter season story all about? Well, the winter season, the story is about excellence. Um, we've got, uh, tonight, we've had a wonderful Venezuelan uh, pianist, Edith Pena, one of their best um, ever pianists. And she was fantastic doing the Sensor Violin um, uh, Piano Concerto, the Sensor Piano Concerto Number no. Two, and on the podium was Yasuo Shinozaki from Japan. And so, uh, music has got the power 
to bring people together of all ages and races and from all over the world, isn't it? Mm, absolutely. Now, a, a, a difficult question, having a walk around and uh, looking at the audience and uh, the guests that were here tonight, uh, it's more the elderly and uh, my generation. How are you going to, or how are you planning to encourage the younger generation to come through? But your generation is the younger <laughs> one. <laughs> it's a very good generation. Yours? Ah, we get in there. <laughs> yes, and um, for example, we've got a concert mm. tomorrow night on Friday the 24th because we thought, well, maybe let's introduce a Friday night last summer season we tried a saturday night because younger people you know with kids and work it's difficult for them to come out during the week mm. so we are doing that so that you know they are able to come and enjoy concerts over the weekends okay the season it started on the 22nd of may it runs through till it runs through for four weeks okay you know um and ends i think june 13 or some somewhere mm. like that and it's going to be a great season. Uh, please, people must come and just enjoy the variety of music. And as I said, music helps us to connect with ourselves as well as with uh, one another. And how do we catch up with you? Uh, you go to uh, the website of the JPO and uh, all the concerts are there and the programs are there. You go to Compute Ticket to buy the tickets and they've got information there as well. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Wow, wow, wow. What a performance. What a lifestyle. Young people, this is the place to go. And of course, we've got a young person that we need to be speaking to. He came to hear classical orchestra for the first time. So we're going to ask him to join us. Young man. How are Good you? evening and welcome to Project CB. Good evening, thank you for having me. So tell us, you, you mentioned that you the, this is the first time for you to be at a classical that orchestra. Is, that's correct. And how was the experience? I loved it, every second. To hear music for me is to see splashes of colour moving around. But to be able to see the movement behind the sound is a whole new experience. Something similar to Disney's Fantasia. Oh, my word. It was fantastic. I loved every second of it. So if you had to pick, who would you bring to, to, to the theater? Oh, goodness. Everyone I know. Of course, my, my very one of my very best friends, CB, Carlette Bartner, uh. um, among many others. But yeah, every person I know, I would encourage every person to at least once in their, in their lifetime to go to a theatre production, especially a classical musical production. It's definitely worth every second of your time. Well, that's how we wrap it up with a young man. Bernard Mitchell. There we go.